Okay, let's look at this grade 11, November 2016, uh, paper 2 question on acids and bases. It says define an acid in terms of the lowery bronsted theory. This one's easy. Learn your definitions. An acid is a proton donor. So if you can give away a proton, you are in an acid. Remember the proton is an H plus ion. Now it says consider the following acid base reaction. H2PO4 minus plus ammonia goes to HPO4 2 minus plus the ammonium ion. It says identify the conjugate acid base pairs in the above reaction and it's four marks and that is because there are two conjugate acid base pairs in here. Okay, how do we know what's a conjugate acid base pair? A conjugate acid base pair only differs by a proton. So if we look at the first thing in this reaction, H2PO4 minus, this is reacting as an acid to form its conjugate base, which is HPO4 2 minus. So if you look at these, the chemical formula differs by a proton and H plus. And the other half here, the second conjugate acid base pair is the ammonia, which is acting as a base because it accepts a proton to form the ammonium ion. So if we want to label these, okay, this is the base and this is its conjugate acid because it accepted a proton, yeah, the base ammonia accepted a proton to form a conjugate acid, and this is the acid which donated a proton to form its conjugate base. So an acid conjugate base pair or base conjugate acid pair, they only differ by a proton, an H+. So you take whichever compound you've got, and you take off an H+, and whatever you are left with is its pair. It's either its acid-base pair or it's, um, it's an acid with its conjugate base or a base with its conjugate acid. They differ only by a proton. Then it says define the term amphalite. This is a substance that can be either an acid or a base. Okay, a substance that can act as either acid or a base. That's a definition. You should learn it. Now it says choose an amphalite in the above reaction. So you need something that can either act as a proton donor or a proton acceptor. And actually in this question there are two of them. We already saw this one, H2PO4 minus, okay, because we saw its conjugate base is the HPO4 2 minus. What would its conjugate acid be? If this one acts as a base and accepts a proton, it forms phosphoric acid H3PO4. That's not given in the um, equation, but it is. this is an amphalite. These are its two partners. Okay. The other amphalite, so this is amphalite 1. And then the second amphalite in this equation is going to be this one, the HPO4, 2 minus. If this one acts as a base and accepts a proton, it will form H2PO4 minus. And if it acts as an acid and donates a proton, its other partner is PO4, 3 minus the phosphate ion. So there are two amphalites here. And so if we just leave them as the amphalites, they would accept either of these two answers, either the HPO4, H2PO4 minus or the HPO4 2 minus. Both of them can either donate a proton or accept a proton. Now this next part of the question is going to get a little bit tricky and it's going to revolve, involve a lot of writing. So I'm going to go zooting up over here with the rest of the question. So it says to you, this question is tricky because we've got two reactions going on here. Here's reaction one, and here is reaction two, and here is a lovely eight mark question that is going to tax our thinking. So let's have a look and see what's going on here. In the beginning, it says to you, 10 grams of an impure sample of sodium carbonate. So look, here is a container with my 10 grams of sodium carbonate. It is added to 
100 cubic centimeters of 0.2 mole per cubic decimeter solution of HCl, hydrochloric acid, and this is Na2CO3. So now these two happily have a reaction. This is an acid plus a methyl carbonate. They're going to give you a salt, water, and carbon dioxide, which you should know. Okay. Then they go on in the second part of the reaction, and they said to you, here, the first part says the acid is in excess. So here my reaction happened. And then when the reaction was over, that 100 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid has turned into my reacted hydrochloric acid, which is now basically the salt and water, and the excess that is left over. So we put the sodium carbonate, we put the hydrochloric acid, some of it reacts and some of it is in excess. And then what do they do is they say, here is your excess, excess HCl, add some magnesium hydroxide, which is also a base being added to the excess acid. And then here, everything, my reaction is finished over here. Okay, so this over here is reaction one. Okay, and this over here is reaction two. So we have to keep track of what is going on here. The first thing it says to you is balance uh, the equation above. Now, if you have the memo in your hand, sad to say the memo is not actually balanced. Okay, because why? On the left-hand side, I've got two sodiums. So on the right-hand side, I am going to need two sodiums as well. So then if I put two sodiums here, by changing the coefficient, because you can't fiddle with the subscripts once you've got an equation, I've now balanced my sodiums, left-hand side, right-hand side, two sodiums. But if I look at my chlorine now, I've now got two chlorine on the right-hand side. I need to make two chlorine on the left-hand side. And so now my sodium and my chlorine are balanced. And then we are left with two hydrogens from the hydrochloric acid and the carbon dioxide. So the two hydrogens end up here in the H2O. One of the oxygens from the carbonate ion ends up with the water. And if we have CO3 2 minus, it will split into the O, which goes to the H2O, and the CO2 gas. That's what happened to the CO3 2 minus ion. So there is my equation when it's balanced. I need two hydrochloric acids per one sodium carbonate, and that will then produce two sodium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. So the equation is balanced by putting a 2 in front of the hydrochloric acid and a 2 in front of the sodium chloride, and the memo is missing one of these 2s. Now it says to you, calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. So where's the information about the hydrochloric acid? It says I've got 100 cubic centimeters, that is my volume, and this 0 0,2 mole per cubic decimeters is my concentration. My problem is my volume of my hydrochloric acid is not in cubic decimeters, so I have to multiply it by 10 to the negative 3, which is the same as dividing by 1,000, and I will end up with 0 0,1 cubic decimeters. So then we can just use the concentration formula. Concentration is the number of moles per unit volume. So if we're trying to find the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, it will be equal to the concentration times the volume, and that volume is... Let's see, the concentration is 0, 0,2 and the volume is 0, 0,1. So this is going to give me 0, 0,02 moles. So now this, we need to make sure we know what is going on here. My initial moles of hydrochloric acid, okay, is 0, 0,02. And this is important because my initial moles is going to be equal to my reacted moles plus my excess moles. Remember, matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It's only converted from one form to the other. So when I had my initial moles of hydrochloric acid, some of it reacts and some of it is left in excess. All the moles will add up together. So this is my initial moles of 
hydrochloric acid. Now it says to you, the excess acid, the excess acid, which we don't know anything about, we only know about the initial acid. The excess acid neutralizes 20 cubic centimeters of a solution of 0,1 mole per cubic decimeter of magnesium hydroxide. There's the balanced equation. Now it says to you, calculate the percentage purity of the sodium carbonate solution. So like this, is what they are looking for the percentage purity of. This 10 grams of sodium carbonate, how much of this was actually sodium carbonate and how much of it was just random filler? Remember sodium carbonate's like washing soda. So some of it will be the actual chemical sodium carbonate and some of it will be the lovely thing that makes your washing powder smell nice or whatever. Okay, so if we want to calculate the percentage purity of sodium carbonate, whenever we start these calculations, let's always start the calculation with what we were given in the question. So even if we don't end up with all eight marks, we have got some of them. We know from the second part that we have a volume of magnesium hydroxide. Okay, my volume of magnesium hydroxide is 20 cubic centimeters which I'm going to convert to cubic decimeters by multiplying by 10 to the negative 3. And we end up with, what is this, 0, 0,02 cubic decimeters of volume. Then we know my concentration of magnesium hydroxide is 0, 0,1. So from this, we can find the number of moles of magnesium hydroxide using my Concentration formula, C equals N over V. And if I rearrange it, the number of moles is the concentration times the volume. So this is 0, 0,1 times 0, 0,02, which is going to give me 0, 0,002 moles of magnesium hydroxide. Okay, now why is this important? This is important because we know from the balanced equation two moles of hydrochloric acid per one mole of magnesium hydroxide. So the magnesium hydroxide can tell us how much excess acid there was. So my mole ratio is two moles of hydrochloric acid is used up by one mole of magnesium hydroxide. And the question from the question here, I had 0 0.002 moles of magnesium hydroxide, so this is a 2 to 1 ratio. This is going to be 0, 0.02 times 2, which is 0, 0.004 moles of HCl. Now, this is my excess over here. This calculation that I've just done, this is 0, 0.04 moles, okay? And what we actually are interested in is the reacted because the reacted is what reacted with the sodium carbonate up there. This reacted with the sodium carbonate in my original sample. So if we want to find out what is the moles of HCl reacted, okay, it will be my initial moles which I calculated in 8.3.2 minus my excess moles. So how much did I have initially? 0, 0,02. How much reacted? 0, 0,004. Now keep in mind this is the hydrochloric acid and if you apply your calculator you will get 0, 0,016 moles of hydrochloric acid. So this is my reacted moles. Where did it react? It reacted in this equation over here, which we balanced. So we know from the balanced equation, one mole of sodium carbonate reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so if we reacted 0, 0,016 moles of hydrochloric acid. We've still got a 2 to 1 ratio, but it's the other way around now. So on this side, it's going to be 0, 0,16 divided by 2. 
And so this is going to give us 0, 0,008 moles of sodium carbonate. That is how many moles of sodium carbonate were present over here. Okay? And we've got this through this long, complicated process of saying, okay, I had this much acid in the beginning initially, and then it reacted, and then there was excess, and then I added the, the magnesium hydroxide. And so by knowing things from the magnesium hydroxide, you can get the excess acid, and because you knew the initial, you subtract to get the reacted, and then the mole ratio gives you the sodium carbonate. So now we know something about the sodium carbonate, which is a good thing, okay? So I don't know where I'm going to scribble here. Let me take away my finished over here, and we can scribble over here, okay? So if we have a look here, we now know we had 0, 0,008 moles of sodium carbonate initially to react from, but we are trying to find percentage purity. So percentage purity is the pure mass over the impure mass times 100. But we don't have a mass, so we are going to have to convert the moles to mass. So we like to use N of the sodium carbonate is going to be equal to the mass in grams over the molar mass, which means that we must find the molar mass of the sodium carbonate. So we go to our periodic table. Sodium is 23. There are two of them. Na2 plus carbon is 12 plus three oxygens, which are each 16. Okay. And if we add that all up in our calculator, we get something like, what is it? It's 108. Okay. 108 grams per mole. So we're going to come and substitute into this formula that the number of moles or the mass, now we're going to rearrange the formula, the mass is the number of moles times the molar mass. So 0, 0,008 times 108, this gives me mm, 0, 0,848 grams. And now finally, we can find my percentage purity because it is the pure over the impure times 100. So in the question it said to you, right up here we had 10 grams in the beginning. So I've got 0, 0,848 over the 10 grams from the beginning times 100 to turn it into a percentage, which means we end up with 8,48%. Okay. What a long story for a whole eight marks, but hopefully you followed. If you didn't follow, go back and start again and make your own little pictures of what's going on.